Sally That Girl in the Kitchen. Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Sally That Girl in the Kitchen. In today's episode, I'm gonna teach you how to make bulemas de papa y queso, Sephardic potato and cheese phyllo spirals. They are a very, very typical Sephardic Turkish dish and it's a recipe that my grandmothers used to make and of course my mom and now me. And it is something that is so highly requested at parties, at events, and pretty much any time that I am willing to make them. They are absolutely delicious with their flaky crust and their yummy potato and cheese filling. And some people are a little intimidated by them because I know working with Philo can be tricky. But as long as you follow these steps, you too can make delicious bulemas de papa y queso. So let's not wait another second and let's get started. For today's recipe, you will need seven ounces of feta cheese, eight ounces of gouda cheese, 10 ounces of shredded Parmesan cheese, a few ounces of vegetable oil as needed, some grated Parmesan cheese for sprinkling, three medium potatoes, three eggs plus one more egg separate, and one 16 ounce box of phyllo sheets. You will also need two large baking sheets, a cutting board, a knife, and a potato peeler, some nonstick cooking spray, some parchment paper, some plastic wrap, two or three clean, freshly washed kitchen towels, a colander, a large bowl and a potato masher, a few bowls for your cheeses, and a few more bowls for your eggs and for your oil, a pastry brush for your oil and another for your egg, a couple of forks, a spoon, and a cheese grater for grating your Gouda. You will also need some cooling racks and a medium-sized pot with a lid as we will be using both the stovetop and the oven for this recipe. So now that we have all of our ingredients and tools together, let's get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is thaw your phyllo dough according to the package instructions. What I like to do is I pull my phyllo dough out of the freezer the night before I'm going to make my recipe. The brand of phyllo that I use has two separate tubes of phyllo, so I don't unwrap those inner tubes. I just grab them as is and I place them in my refrigerator overnight so that they're ready in the morning. So the next morning, once my phyllo is thawed, but still in the refrigerator, the first thing I'm going to do is fill my pot about three fourths of the way up with some room temperature water. And then I just place it on my stove top, but I do not turn it on just yet. Then I grab my three medium sized potatoes and then I peel them and then I will cut them into small chunks just so that they soften quicker when I boil them. And then I add them into that pot with cool water and I place my lid on it. Then I turn my stove on to high, but I'm only gonna leave it on high for about 10 minutes because I want my water to start to boil. So maybe set a timer or just pay attention. Now. While that's happening, I'm going to take advantage of this time and I'm going to start preparing my cheeses. The first thing I'm going to want to do is crumble my feta, which I prefer to buy in block form because I find I get a better quality cheese that way. So if you have also bought it in block form, just use your hands to crumble it up. It's very easy to break apart. Just crumble it with your hands. Then use your cheese grater to grate your Gouda. It helps if your cheese is cold, so leave your cheese in the refrigerator until it is ready to grate. Then just grate it and set your cheese aside. And then finally, I like to pour my shredded Parmesan cheese into another bowl, but of course you can pour it into our mixture when the time comes straight from the back. So at this point, your water is likely boiling and at 
this point, I like to lower my temperature to about medium or somewhere between low and medium. It really depends on the heat of your own stovetop because what I want to do is allow my water to slowly boil and cook my potatoes. The whole process should take no more than another 20 minutes, so about 30 minutes in total. And I also like to leave my lid slightly off center to kind of release a little bit of steam as the water boils to avoid overboiling. So just keep an eye on it. And at this point you could set another 20 minute timer to allow your potatoes to finish cooking. So once your potatoes have been on the stove for a total of 30 minutes, uncover them and then just test them with your fork to make sure that they are done. They should break apart real easily at this point because we wanna mash them, so we want them nice and soft. So assuming they're ready, turn your stove off and then very carefully, we're going to transfer this over to our sink where we have a colander waiting and we are going to just spill out all of the water from the pot to drain our potatoes well. So just pour all of the water out and then pour your potatoes into the colander and just make sure you get all that potato out. And then we're going to shake this colander really well to make sure that all of the water drains off of our potatoes. Now, once you've eliminated all of the water, then you're gonna transfer your potatoes into a large bowl for mashing. So just carefully bring it over to your bowl, spill it in, and then use a spoon if you have to because some of that potato may stick to your colander and make sure you get all of that yummy potato into your bowl. Now, once your potato is in your bowl and it is still hot, this is the best time to mash your potatoes. So grab your potato masher and start mashing. When the potatoes are warm, they will come apart real easy. So definitely do this while your potatoes are still hot. It'll really make a difference and they will mash up real quickly. Make sure to mash your potatoes well because you're trying to eliminate any large pieces. So mash them really well. And once they're fully mashed, then you just wanna let them sit for a few minutes to become room temperature. You want them cool enough to handle that when you touch them, they are not emitting steam and they are not feeling hot. So now our potatoes are ready without any large chunks and I'm gonna start adding the cheese. So I've added my shredded Parmesan cheese. Now I'm going to add my crumbled feta. And finally, I am going to add my shredded Gouda. Now, once all three of my cheeses are in, I'm going to use my hands to combine the cheeses with my potato. The best way to incorporate the cheese is really using your hands. There's no better method than to just put your hands in and fold the potato over the cheese and then just gently use your fingers to combine the mixture. It works better than any spoon possibly could. So don't be afraid to use your hands. Just stick your hands right in, go to the bottom of the bowl and then bring your potato over and then gently just break up the pieces and mix your cheeses with your potato. And you'll notice that as I did so, I found a little lump of potato. So if you feel any little piece of potato, it's a good time to just break it up. Now, once you've incorporated all of these ingredients, this is the time where you should taste your mixture because you wanna make sure that you have the right flavor, that you have enough cheese, that it's salty enough. I didn't add any salt because the cheeses I'm using are quite salty. So I'm not adding any salt but you should taste your mixture and decide. For my taste, it's perfect. It doesn't need a thing. But if you need a little salt, now would be the time. Or if you want it a little more sharp, you could always sprinkle in some of that grated Parmesan cheese that we have reserved for the top of our bulemas. Now would be the time to add anything that you think it may need. So once your mixture is ready, now we are going to incorporate our eggs, which is why I tasted it before, because I did not want to have to try it after I incorporated my raw eggs. 
So you are going to take three of the eggs from the recipe and you're going to break them into a bowl and then you're going to beat them well. And we're going to be adding three eggs into the mixture to bring the mixture together. The eggs work as a binder and it makes our mixture creamy. So definitely don't skip out on the eggs. So we're gonna add three of them to the bowl whisk them well, and then incorporate them into our potato and cheese mixture. I like to pour the eggs right in, and then I use the fork that I used for beating, and then I just kind of help bring the eggs into the mixture. I just start incorporating them just very gently with the fork. But then of course, once I've started to bring them in, then I'm going to switch to my hands because there's really nothing like mixing with your hands. You really want to get a feel for your mixture because you're going to be able to tell when your eggs are well distributed by the moisture and the texture in your mixture. So just like before, go to the bottom and just reach in and fold your mixture over and you're just going to want to bring it all together. You want that moisture from the eggs well distributed amongst your potato and your cheeses. You want it nicely distributed. This is what your mixture should look like once your potatoes have been well mixed with your cheese and your eggs. It kind of holds together. You see how the egg works as a binder, it just brings the mixture together. So that is when your mixture is ready. So now grab a spoon because we're going to be using that to fill our bulemas and then grab some parchment paper and line two large baking sheets. We really want to use large ones because these bulemas come out fairly large, plus they need a little room in between for baking. So I'm gonna be using two large baking sheets and I'm gonna line them both with my parchment. And then I'm going to grab some nonstick cooking spray and I'm going to give them a bit of a spray. Don't overdo it because the bulemas will have oil in them and that will help keep them from sticking. But just for good measure, I do like to give my parchment paper a light spray of nonstick cooking spray. So now that our trays are ready, it is time to preheat our oven. So preheat your oven to 350 degrees, which will be our baking temperature for our bulimas. So once you've done so, I like to prepare everything I'm going to need for assembling my bulemas. So the first thing I do is I pour a few ounces of oil into a bowl and I make sure I have a pastry brush for it because I'm going to be using that for my bulemas. Then I prepare my egg wash by breaking an egg into a bowl and then I beat it and I add a little bit of water to it, and that will be what we will be using as our egg wash. And of course, I like to have a second pastry brush available to be able to use it with my egg. So now, bring over your plastic wrap and your three clean kitchen towels. I suggested three, but I really usually only use two because of the size of my trays, but it's better to have more than less. The plastic wrap and kitchen towels are critical to keeping our phyllo dough from getting dried out. So what I do is I run the faucet and I wet my kitchen towels and then I squeeze them out really well so that they're moist but they're not dripping. This is really important. Then I place them on the counter near me so they're available for when I need them. Then it's time to open up your phyllo. So pull one roll out of the refrigerator and leave the other one in the refrigerator while you start working. And then take the outer bag off and then very gently unroll the plastic. And I like to leave them right on that plastic. So I just unroll them very gently. And I just spread them out right on top of that same plastic that they came in. And you have to be real gentle because phyllo breaks very easily. And then I grab my plastic wrap and I'm going to be covering my phyllo dough with my plastic wrap because while I'm working, my phyllo will always be covered. It's going to have plastic. And then on top of the plastic, you are going to place that moist towel 
that kitchen towel that you ran under the faucet and then just wrung out all the excess water from and you are going to use that to keep your phyllo covered at all times. This is critical to making anything with phyllo. This is how we keep our phyllo from drying out and becoming brittle. This is what you need to do as you work. So make sure you have everything ready and your phyllo is covered, your filling is ready, you have everything around you that you could possibly need, and now it's time to start forming our bulemas. So I am going to be using two sheets of phyllo per bulema. And so you're going to very gently grab a sheet and you notice I covered my phyllo again. And then I'm going to use my pastry brush and I'm going to lightly brush my sheet of phyllo. The first sheet of phyllo sometimes comes torn. This one happens to be torn, but it's fine. You can still use it because we're going to be rolling this up so it's quite forgiving. And then you place a second sheet on top of the first one, and then you repeat the process. You can either use a pastry brush or you can even use your fingertips to oil your phyllo dough. The idea is to get a nice flaky dough. And if you don't oil your dough, then it is going to be dry and brittle. And that is not what you want for a true bulema. Of course, you don't want to over oil your dough either because you don't want a completely greasy bulema. So that's why I am being very gentle and I'm just barely dipping the tip of my brush in the oil so that I can just apply a perfect amount of oil to my dough. So now your two sheets of phyllo dough are ready for filling. So you're going to use a spoon and you're going to grab some of that filling. And of course, I'm going to use my hands to help me make a long line of filling. So you can put in as much or as little filling as you want. I like my bulemas with plenty of filling because I want them very tasty. I want to really feel that cheese running throughout. And so just use your hands and make a row of filling. And then I like to fold my bulema ends in, but you do not have to do this step if you prefer to just have a loose end, that's fine. And then I fold over my phyllo on to the filling and then very gently, you'll notice it was torn, but like I said, it doesn't matter that it's broken because it will be forgiving. Once you roll it, it will just kind of roll over itself and you're going to notice that it's going to be quite forgiving. And then if you feel like your pastry is a little dry, then give it another brush of oil or just use your fingertips to run a little oil over it. Once you've completely folded your dough over itself, then your bulema is ready to be folded into a spiral. So just grab one end and then gently bring the other end around and you're going to form a spiral with your filled phyllo. So now that your bulema has been formed, you just take it over and put it on your prepared baking sheet. And then you are going to have a beautiful looking bulema and we're ready to move on to making another one. So I'm gonna show you a couple of times just so that you see the process again. Remember, put out our sheet, we're gonna brush it with a little bit of oil, put on a second sheet, remember to cover your dough because it is important to keep that dough from drying out. Every time you make a new bulema, you have to cover your dough again and lightly oil that second sheet that you placed on top of the first one. And then of course, you are going to use your spoon along with your hands to help you form a long row of filling. And you wanna always do it on the longer side of your rectangle. Your phyllo is in a rectangular shape, so you're going to run that filling along the longer side. And notice that I leave almost an inch away from the edge just to leave some space both on the sides and on the bottom on the piece that's closest to me so that I have enough phyllo to roll over onto the filling. So I'll show you the process again just so that you see how the rolling works. And you're just gently rolling that phyllo dough over the filling 
and then over and over over itself of course adding a little touch of oil if you feel that your pastry is a little dry or just running your fingers across it to spread out the oil and then once you form that nice long log then you are going to make a spiral out of it i'm going to try to do this one slowly to show you the process i'm being very gentle i'm just folding the dough over itself and then i'm bringing the other side around i'm just forming a complete spiral and you can just very gently tuck that little end under itself or if not it's fine either way your bulemas will look beautiful that's what your bulema should look like when it's ready and then we're going to place it on that prepared tray but what I want to do is I'm going to cover these because what's the point in keeping that phyllo nice and moist and making sure it's well oiled if they're just going to dry out as I make the rest. So I'm going to do the same thing that I do with my dough. I'm going to do it here on my tray. I'm going to cover them with plastic wrap and then I'm going to get another one of those damp towels and I'm gonna place it right on top of them so that I can continue forming other bulemas. That way they won't dry out while I make more. So now I'm going to keep forming bulemas over and over, always remembering to cover my dough, keep it nice and moist, and remembering to oil my sheets. And then I'm just gonna keep forming them until I've either run out of phyllo from the package or I filled up my first tray. As you can see, making bulema de papa y queso is not really difficult at all. It's just a matter of following a certain technique of keeping our phyllo dough covered so that it stays moist and it doesn't get brittle, of brushing our sheets with oil, and then of course of gently shaping our bulema. It's really that simple. So I was able to get 11 bulemas out of my first package but once I hit 11 I had room on the tray for one more so I'm going to open that second roll which I had in my refrigerator because remember we want to keep these fresh we want to keep them from drying out so I'm going to open my second roll of dough and what I'm going to do is I'm going to unroll it the same way I did with my first one very gently And then I'm going to add that sheet that I have left. I have one sheet left for my first roll. And I'm going to put it on top so that I can continue working. And then I'm just going to add these to my pile. And then, of course, I'm always going to cover it and then cover it again. My two layers, plastic and then my moist towel. And then I'm just going to continue shaping and forming my bulemas. Now, I'm going to make one more, and this will be my 12th. And that means that I will have filled my first large tray. So it's very exciting because now we're going to be able to move on to the next step. I'm totally excited about moving on to the next step. So I am speeding the video up on this one to show you the final product and be able to move on. See how I had that moist towel and that I had that plastic wrap on them. So they remained beautiful. They haven't dried out. They look gorgeous and now it's time to give them the egg wash so remember we prepared that egg wash because we wanted to have everything handy and i just give it a little mix and then i'm grabbing a second pastry brush because i really prefer not to use the same one that i'm using for the oil but if you don't have one you can just wash that one out and then i'm going to give it a nice coating of egg wash and i'm going to do that for all 12 bulemas so now that all 12 have an egg wash, it's time to grab the grated Parmesan cheese and we are going to sprinkle some cheese on top of each bulema. I am very particular about the type of cheese I use in each of my recipes. So when I make borrecas, sometimes I'll top them with grated cheese and sometimes with shredded, but I prefer shredded. But when it comes to bulemas, I prefer topping them with grated cheese. It's just a matter of look. You could really use whichever cheese you prefer. I really just like the look they get with some grated cheese on top. So now, yay, it's time to put them in the oven. Look how beautiful they look. I cannot wait to see what they look like when they come out. They're gonna be absolutely gorgeous and they're gonna be so delicious. So in they go, I place them 
on a center rack in my hot oven and then I set a 30 minute timer to allow them to cook and to get beautifully golden. But our work here is not done. I have my second tray ready and I'm going to continue forming bulemas while my first batch bakes. Remembering to always cover both the phyllo and the tray with the completed bulemas with my plastic wrap and with a moist kitchen towel. So guess what? 30 minutes have passed and look how gorgeous my first batch of bulemas look. Tell me that is not absolutely beautiful. They are golden and flaky and crispy and absolutely delicious. Those spirals are mesmerizing and everyone is going to love them. And they smell incredible. With that combination of cheeses, you cannot go wrong. They are so delicious. Oh goodness, I cannot wait to get into these. But our work is not done. We still have more bulemas to make. But before I go back to shaping the rest of my bulemas, I am going to remove these hot bulemas from my baking tray and place them onto a cooling rack. I want them to remain crispy and their bottoms to stay crispy. So the best way to do that is to very carefully, with the help of a spatula, remove them from the hot tray and place them onto a cooling rack where they can gently cool, especially those bottoms, so that they remain nice and crispy. Look at how beautiful that is. They're absolutely gorgeous. They smell incredible. I wish you could smell them right now. So of course, while this first tray was baking, I was working on the rest of my bulemas, and now I formed another nine bulemas that are also going to be ready for their egg wash and to go into the oven. So I was able to get a total of 21 bulemas out of this batch of filling. So once you run out of filling, then it's time to give your second batch of bulemas an egg wash. And we're gonna do the same thing. I just kind of give it a little stir to bring it back together. And then I grab my pastry brush and then I give them all a nice egg wash. And then of course, I'm going to give them all a sprinkling of the grated Parmesan cheese like I did with my first tray before placing them into the oven to bake. Now, I will mention, when I am preparing a recipe, it's not always easy to figure out how much filling I'm going to need for a certain amount of dough. But I think I did pretty well because I only have three sheets left of phyllo. So of course, nothing goes to waste in my kitchen. I wrap them up in the plastic that they came in and I put them in a Ziploc bag and I'll stick them in my refrigerator and later I will figure out what to fill them with. I'll just use some cheese or some guava or both, or maybe I'll use some ground beef that I have left over. I will definitely use them for something. Now, place your second tray into the center rack of your oven and then once again, set another 30 minute timer to allow the rest of your bulemas to bake. And here they are, gorgeous. Just as beautiful as our first batch. They are golden, flaky, they smell incredible, and they look beautiful. Everyone is going to love these. Now, of course, just like you did with the first batch, use a spatula to help you remove the hot bulemas from your baking tray and put them onto your cooling rack to allow them to cool. How incredible do these look? I am so grateful to my Sephardic grandmothers and parents for teaching me these incredible recipes. These Sephardic potato and cheese phyllo spirals are so delicious. You have to try them. If you've never had one, you are in for quite the treat. Bulemas de papa y queso are a hit everywhere, and I'm sure you and your family will love them. They are really a delicacy that I am so grateful to know how to make, and here I am sharing my family recipe with you, so I hope you will enjoy it just as much as we do. I'm sure you will, because they really are spectacular. There really is nothing like a Sephardic Turkish bulema de papa y queso. 
They are so delicious. They're great at any time of the day and everyone is going to want them. So make sure you hide a couple of these for yourself because if not, by the time you blink, they will be gone. They are that good. Everyone is going to love them and everybody is going to want to eat them. I will also mention that if you've ever seen my video for spinach, feta, and Parmesan cheese bulemas made with homemade dough, the filling I use in those is interchangeable with this filling. In other words, you can use that spinach filling with this phyllo pastry, or you can use this potato and cheese filling for that homemade dough pastry. Either way, they are delicious. So that is an added plus. You can make these with that spinach and cheese filling too, and they are spectacular. If you are looking for a recipe to impress, look no further. This is it. They are really that great. And once you try them, you will be hooked. They're just so delicious and they're perfect to serve at any time. And of course, for friends or a special occasion, this is something really special and they are going to know that you really went out of your way to make them something different delicious and really just over the top spectacular. So at this point, I think I have waited long enough and I really have to try one of these because I cannot stand how incredible they smell. And I have not taken a single bite, not to mention that my eldest son has already come into the kitchen and said, let's go mom, are you finished with your filming already? Come on, it's time to eat. So obviously these will draw in a crowd. So lucky me, I'm gonna take a taste and I'm gonna let you know how they turned out. Wow, I'm so excited. Look at how beautiful that looks. This is gonna be delicious, I can't wait. And yes, bulemas are eaten with your hands, so no silverware necessary. Just break off a piece or just take a bite. Look at that incredible filling. Look at how yummy that cheese and potato filling looks. Oh my. Wow. Mmm. These are so good. Oh my goodness. That cheese and potato filling is spectacular. And that phyllo dough is so flaky. Incredible. Mmm. Mmm. I just need to keep eating it. It is so good. You're going to love this. Look at how beautiful it looks and look at that cheese running all the way through it. And even the bottom has remained crispy and light. Really, this is spectacular. And look at that flaky crust. It's just perfect. I need to have another piece. Wow. I absolutely love these. I know you're going to love them. So good. Mm, delicious. Look at how incredible they look. That cheese and potato, that just flaky goodness all around them, so good. Now, don't these look absolutely incredible? Until you try these, you are not gonna believe just how yummy they are. They're perfect with that flaky dough and that delicious potato and cheese filling. You are really going to love these, trust me. No, better yet, don't trust me. You're gonna have to try to make this recipe yourself. And on a side note, I'd like to announce that I have completed my first giveaway. As promised, once I hit 500 YouTube subscribers, I would be doing a giveaway on my Instagram page, and so I have. And congratulations to the winner. And if you're not already following me on social media, you can find Sally That Girl in the Kitchen on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest. So, as usual, if you've enjoyed today's recipe, don't forget to like, comment, and share. And most importantly, remember to subscribe to my channel and to touch that little notification bell so that you don't miss out on a single amazing, different, delicious, spectacular recipe that I have planned for you. See you next time. Sally That Girl in the Kitchen.